Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Alex and I have a 12 month old son, Jed, and I am going to record a video. Sorry, that was a really uh, 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 start. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to record a video for you today on breastfeeding. Okay, so if you notice I'm wearing the same clothes as the video I just did, yes, I'm filming another one in the same clothes. Let's just get started. Okay, so I want to film a video for you today on breastfeeding. I'm not going to call it my breastfeeding journey. I'm going to call it my breastfeeding experience. The reason I want to have a little chat about this is because it's become really apparent throughout um, becoming a mum last year and continuing that breastfeeding is sort of like this mysterious thing that you don't really find out about until you become a mum and then you find out that it can be really hard and challenging and it just comes to a surprise to most mums. So I was in the camp of thinking that breastfeeding just came naturally and that you didn't really have to think much about it, that it would just happen, that breastfeeding in public would just happen and that it would all be quite easy and that wasn't the case. And I really think that more people need to have these conversations to prepare mums for the fact that it's not, yes, it is a natural process, but the skill of breastfeeding is not something that's just built into you. You're not supposed to just know how to do it. And unfortunately, I think there's a lack of education and a lack of conversation to prepare new mums for that realization. And the more open we can be about the experience, the easier it's going to be for mums. Because when you become a new mum and you, you've got the shock of hormones, you've got the shock of your life completely changing, to have the difficult experience of navigating breastfeeding on top of that is, can just be a lot to handle. And so... I'm making this video for mums who may be struggling with breastfeeding, who may be questioning why they're struggling. I'm making it for mums who have already breastfed, um, so maybe they can sort of feel that they're, they're not alone in the fact that they had trouble. Um, and I'm making it for people who may be pregnant and preparing to hopefully breastfeed, that this might help you. So I also just want to say that I've been lucky to breastfeed Jed for a year and I'm still breastfeeding him. Um, but, you know, it hasn't been smooth sailing and I am lucky and for some ladies it just doesn't happen. And that's, some ladies choose not to breastfeed at all. That is absolutely fine. Um, fed is best. Okay, they say that breast fed baby, you know, that breastfeeding is best. Okay, yes, the nutrients from breast milk may be the best, but it's not always an option. So fed is best. People shouldn't feel the pressure to breastfeed if it doesn't feel right for them, if it doesn't fit for them, if they simply can't because for some people it might be too painful. Um, their milk supply may not be enough various reasons so I just want to start out by saying uh, however you choose to feed your baby that is best because that is the best for you okay but I want to go back to the beginning now and just tell you about my experience so I guess my experience with breastfeeding started uh, about a month before I actually had Jed, I had gestational diabetes. And when you have that, they encourage you to start expressing uh, colostrum. Some, I can't remember how long before, it could be a month before the baby's born, so that um, you have some colostrum to give the baby in case their blood sugar levels are low. I think that's why. Um, so I had to 
manually express and collect milk into a teaspoon and then suck it up with a syringe and then freeze that label it I had and it took about 20 minutes every night so first of all this is absolutely not how I pictured spending the end of my pregnancy it felt really really weird it felt alien strange like milking yourself it just feels really weird so that's where I started um, when I was in hospital Jed couldn't latch properly he was trying to but evidently wasn't getting enough milk from me um, because he was very unsettled and through the nights and just wasn't getting enough milk he was having trouble latching off me because TMI for anyone watching but I had kind of flattish nipple so he didn't have much to latch onto so in the hospital I was having to pump also my milk didn't come in straight away that's another thing they don't really tell you about your milk isn't automatically there it's colostrum at the start and then your actual milk comes in a bit later for some it might be a few days for me it wasn't till six days so in the hospital they brought in a pump for me to st uh, like an electric pump for me to start pumping to encourage the milk to come in now I can talk about this freely now because I've pumped hundreds of times now but when you pump for the first time or you know even for the first few weeks of pumping I have to say it's a very weird experience and I remember texting my friends who were mums and saying I feel like a cow you feel like a cow hooked up to uh, a milking machine and particularly in front of your husband you just feel really like it's very unsexy and it's very kind of just like I don't know it's very it's very strange it's a very strange thing to have to do and it feels really weird at first so that's just how it is but you couldn't like I couldn't prepare myself for that so I bought a breast pump thinking that I'd have it in the cupboard and maybe months down the track I might get it out and use it if I wanted a milk supply in case we went out somewhere i had absolutely no idea that i was going to need it from the get-go so that was a bit of a shock um the other thing that you aren't really prepared for is that in the hospital the nurses want to make sure that you can breastfeed before they let you leave the hospital or at least that was the case um, where i'm from and so you know there'd be female nurses and there'd be some male nurses and you'd have to kind of show them that you could express milk with your hand and that you could feed your baby so there's just it's kind of uh there's a lot of there's just basically it's not that the baby clicks on and you're feeding that you might imagine in your head it's very it is very clinical and it is like there's a lot of spotlight on you and yeah it's difficult anyway uh, well it can be difficult i'm not saying this is everyone's experience um when i went home from the hospital it became apparent through jed being extremely um unsettled that he wasn't getting enough milk from me and when the midwife came to visit us at our house she told us to give him some formula to top him up as soon as we gave him some formula he had a really great settled sleep so clearly he had been a bit hungry and then I had to do a schedule where I would feed him for I think 40 minutes and then I would pump for 20 minutes now um this was a really difficult time for me the first few weeks because I so I was I was holding Jed and feeding him for 40 minutes which by the way is a really long time when you're breastfeeding like eight or nine times a day and then after I finished feeding him 
which was half feeding him, half just encouraging him to suck. I would then pass him over to my husband who would get to sort of interact with him a little bit, cuddle him, and then I'd have to sit there with my boobs out, hooked up to this, um, to the breast pump and just feeling like an absolute sloth because it's post-pregnancy, your tummy's all floppy, you might be a little bit feeling gross and then you're just a cow hooked up to a machine and it just is, you just don't feel great. It feels really weird. And I felt like I was missing out on a bit of just the lovely cuddle time without having to sort of because the feeding time like I said it's not like you just click them on and they feed calmly you kind of like for me anyway it was playing around with finding the right positions it was having to keep check that he was latched properly having to readjust and all that so different scenario to getting to cuddle him and whatnot the next sort of um, step in the process came when I think on day five or six um, we went to the hospital and I decided to see a lactation consultant because um, of the difficulty with feeding and whatnot and she suggested that I use a breast shield. So breast shield is before having a baby I thought a breast shield was something that you probably something flat that you put across your nipple area to protect you if your baby was like biting or if you had sore nipples or whatever. Luckily for me, I never got sore cracked nipples. Um, but nipple shields are also actually used to help babies to feed if they can't latch properly. Now, if you've never seen one, a nipple shield is, is like a piece of circular or oval shaped plastic and it's got this fake cone shaped nipple on it that's about a couple of centimeters high and about 1.5 centimeters wide it's like this massive nipple some people might have them like that but mine have never looked like that and you stick them to your boob and then the baby attaches to that and sucks the sucks the milk through that so the lactation consultant encouraged me to use those to help Jed learn to latch and I so I used those for about three weeks. Grateful for those nipple shields because they allowed me to feed my baby. So that's fantastic. But you feel so silly and once again quite unattractive sitting there with your fake little plastic nipple and um, they come off, you have to wash and sterilize them. If the baby accidentally, sorry, there's kids screaming outside. If the baby accidentally knocks it off, the pooled milk inside it can spill everywhere. At the time it was summer, we had no air conditioning, so it'll be like, we're hot and sweaty and now there's disgusting milk spilled all over me and I feel revolting and the nipple shields are clear so you always lose them it's just gross anyway on by about the third or fourth week um a friend so i thought i was going to have to use these forever but just coincidentally talking to a friend she told me that she successfully um transitioned from using those to her baby being able to go directly on the breast so i think around the third or fourth week i started feeding Jed off the nipple shield for a while and then towards the end of the feed or maybe I maybe I tried him on there at the beginning I can't remember I think I started with it and then took it off and I would just try him on there um for a for a little while and then I just gradually built up to doing that you know I'd start a feed like that and just do it for like one feed a day and eventually I built up to all the feeds being uh, without the shield and I have been feeding him without the shield ever since and it was so good when I didn't have to use that anymore because they were just a pest. Um, 
so then the other thing that was difficult was I would see all these ladies in public with their neat little wraps over them breastfeeding their babies underneath the cover that we have never done that so I tried to breastfeed Jed in public a few times and he would just look around want to turn around and then I'd be fully exposed and it was just really awkward to hold him without any support and it just didn't work for me so we've never done power to you if you can do that I think it's fantastic but be prepared it may not work for you and if it doesn't don't feel guilty about it it's never really been an issue for me um, if we've been out I've just found like a parents room and fed him there and or you know if we've been at friends houses or family I've just gone to a room and fed Jed there in privacy so that hasn't been an issue but I do remember thinking a few times like looking at other mums thinking there's something wrong with me because they look so comfortable and I just feel really uncomfortable um, like physically supporting him and it just seems like a pain to do so I just want to say don't like force feel like you have to force yourself to do that if it's not working for you it's not gonna work for everyone um, and so I guess breastfeeding becomes pretty old hat after you've done it for I want to say a few months because I think the first few months in my head I was just saying just see if you can make it to one month and then after one month I'd go just see if you can make it to two months and then I think after about three months I was probably okay though when your baby is going through a fussy period like a wonder week leap um, which is a developmental stage when they can become really fussy they can become really fussy while feeding they can like Jed was like that he would thrash himself around scream cry seem like he didn't want to feed at all um, just be aware that those phases can happen and you might just need to stick it out because it might last a few days or a week but then the baby will move past it and you'll be able to continue feeding so yeah I would say everything has been fine for several months and I've enjoyed the experience but I will say that um, you know it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of feeding at, at the start because the feeds take 45 40 minutes or so and then again that totally depends on the baby and the mum but lately our feeds have been you know five minutes ten minutes or less and it's been like that for a while um so that pretty much concludes my breastfeeding experience um i was, didn't want to tell you this to make it seem like it's a horrible experience it's an experience that i'm really really grateful for and it's an experience that i enjoy and have enjoyed for quite some time it's really just those beginning stages that were quite a shock to the system and you get used to it and it's like something that if most people or a lot of people go through but the more conversation that we can have around letting people know that it's not always just something that happens naturally I think the better I was really lucky to have the support of several friends who were already mums that I could reach out to and also have a really supportive mothers group that I saw on a weekly basis with um, attending um, midwife nurses so they could answer our questions. Not everyone has access to that type of support so you, those, if you're in that situation you might be feeling extra freaked out. So whatever your circumstance, whether you're already a mum, whether you're struggling with feeding at the moment or whether you're going to become a mum, I really hope that this video has helped you in some way to just feel supported and that if you are struggling, it's not just you, trust me, we all go through these struggles because I've talked to lots of my friends about it. 
Um, and if you are struggling, there are lots of resources available to you where you can reach out to for help and to ask questions. Um, so reach out to those surface services because there are people available that can help you through. But anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for making it to the end. If you enjoyed this video or got something out of it, I would really love if you could hit the thumbs up button and maybe leave a comment below. And please feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Thanks guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye!